Hello, thanks for joining me again. Um, today I'm going to show my three new drawings I got from Scott Straka. And then I'll talk a little bit about the movies that the drawings are from. And then at the end I'll recommend some stuff I watched lately that's pretty good. So, um, so yeah, my drawings came in today. I'm pretty excited. Um, this one is Freddy vs. Jason. Pretty awesome. Just some cool stuff there, man. Really well done. I've, I've already got a drawing of Jason from Scott, but I just I didn't have a Freddy. And I've got a autograph from Heather Langenkamp with Freddy in the picture. So I just really needed a Freddy drawing, and I just really dig the Freddy on, on this drawing. Like, Freddy looks cool, man. Like, well done. Plus, I really like the movie Freddy vs. Jason. Um, it don't get a lot of hate, but, you know. But I think it's cool. I think they brought them together real well. So, that's awesome. This is the reason I, I placed the order. As soon as I ordered my last three drawings, like, I mean, as soon as I clicked check out and put in my credit card and all that, as soon as I did that, he dropped this one. Which is, of course, Nancy from The Craft. I mean, this might be my second favorite drawing I have from him. This is just, the detail is stunning on that. That is, and I know the movie has its flaws. The characters aren't that well developed and all that, but I was a kid when it came out in the 90s, and I just really dug it. And, of course, Nancy was the... The reason to watch it, she was just awesome. Feruza Balk, that's probably her best role, actually. And that's just, oh, I love that drawing. When he dropped that, I was like, I'm, I know I'm going to have to make another order because i got to get that one. Now, this one, I forgot I was getting a bonus print and I only bought two frames. What's crazy is Scott Straka, he must know me because... I had actually put this one in the cart the last time I ordered, and then I took it out. I was like, ah, I'll get it later. So I really did want it, and both times he sent me a, a bonus print, it's just, he's nailed it. I, he just knows what I ordered, probably. He's like, just give him something horror, he'll like it. So it's the killer from Happy Death Day, the baby face mascot killer. Now, Happy Death Day, I really dug that movie. Yeah, it's PG-13. Yeah, they cut away from the kills and stuff. But, I mean, it's Groundhog Day, but horror. Chick keeps getting killed every day. Reliving the same day over and over. Until she figures out who's killing her and why. Just really cool, really cool um, concept. Also, it's really awesome that the movie starts out where... The, our main character she's just a real conceited horrible person and going through this I mean she actually has character development she becomes a very likable character so much so that you go into the second one no problems because you're like yeah I, I dug her at the end of the first one so let's see well, what else is going on and I dug the second one too and of course the the mascot a mask makes a return in the second one, so, I mean, can't really tell who who, who he drew behind the mask. But I'm going to guess it was the killer from part one. <sighs> kind of like when I got the scream, I'm like, now, is that, you know, Skeet Ulrich or Stu or, you know, is it Timothy Oliphant or, or Skeet's mom or... Or is it Nev's brother? Who who's under the mask? You know, which scream is it from? Is it is it uh, her? Uh, is it Sydney's cousin and and the um, the Culkin kid? Never know. Don't know which scream I've got, but it's a cool bloody scream face. Do know that. All right, some of the stuff I want to recommend. I did the Shutter free trial. I had Shutter a while back, and. 
I don't know, I just kind of canceled it. But here around Halloween, there was some stuff they put on there I really wanted to see. So I'm like, man, I'm going to do the free trial. And you only got it for like a few days, I think. I don't even think it was a whole week. Then I went to cancel it, and they were like, take a month. Take a free month and see if you want to keep it. I'm really thinking about keeping it because uh, there were some documentaries on there that I really got into uh, lately. Um, one just dropped. It was called Leap of Faith where they talk to Friedkin, the director of The Exorcist, and the whole documentary is just him being interviewed and telling about making The Exorcist. Now, he's a little... He's a little... kind of a know-it-all, like, talking about French or Italian, like, symphonies and stuff when he was trying to score the the movie and stuff, you know, but, I mean, he's freaking, so, it'd be like Kubrick giving an interview, and you, you're like, ah, oh, he's being real braggadocious, well, that's Kubrick, he can do that, freaking can do that, and watching this documentary, man, it just really hit me like, wow, Exorcist was, and is, just a great movie, and it's hard to believe it was even made, because it, it gets brutal, and, oof, that movie's disturbing. That's one of the few movies in my life that has actually scared me. I was in I was in probably middle school or even high school. And I watched this movie by myself one night. And that movie scared me so bad that I started breaking my rock CDs. Thinking, you know, the devil's in the rock music. That movie, that movie got me. So, and even now... I mean, it doesn't scare me now, but it's still just, they don't make horror like that anymore. They don't make a movie that is so about the story and the characters much anymore, and I really dig that. Like, just the two priests, you know, one of them's already, you know, faced off against Pazuzu, and the other priest is losing his faith, and and it's almost like the devil or the demon baited that priest to come there to attack him while he's losing his faith. Just some real, real cool stuff in that movie. And some real horrendous stuff. But Yeah, so Leap of Faith, where they interview uh, Friedkin. I highly recommend that doc. It was really, really cool. Like, a lot of things in that movie just, just came together crazily. Like, he just happened to discover the the tubular bells going through like like random discs that were like had labels on them like they weren't even like they weren't even packaged from stores or something it was just like random self-labeled discs and he finds tubular bells that everybody knows from that movie and had already casted Stacy Keach as Father Karras and the other dude's like, let me audition. I'm this guy. I'm this dude. And he auditions and freaking's like, yeah, we got to drop Keach. This is a dude. So, I mean, just some real cool stuff. I also found this documentary on there, and it's like seven, seven parts or more. And it's all about sci-fi, and it's James Cameron, you know, who did Terminator. He did Aliens. Not Alien, that was Ridley Scott, but, you know, he did the sequel. Um, it's James Cameron interviewing, like, Ridley Scott, Christopher Nolan, Steven Spielberg, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, David Keith, or Keith David, I can't never remember, because, you know, same names just switch. Whichever one was in the thing, I think it's David Keith. But, uh, they interview him, they interview... Like, they interview Mila Jovovich, because it's all about sci-fi, and she was in The Fifth Element and stuff. Interview Sigourney Weaver, that's awesome. I mean, it's just, it's packed with almost anybody that's been in science fiction, and it's like, they split it up like, like, talk about Alien, and not just like Ridley Scott's Alien, like, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, like, E.T., like, a bunch of alien movies. 
things like time travel, uh, space, you know, um, like dystopian futures and monsters. It's real cool, real cool uh, documentary. I also, like, it takes me so long to find something to watch on Netflix, but I just pulled up Netflix like, I'm going to see what's new. Maybe they've added something. I mean, as soon as I pulled it up, Kevin Hart had another stand-up special. Brand new one. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. I like Kevin Hart a lot. And I dug it. It, it was funny. I just, man, comedy. Comedy's hard right now. You you can't joke about anything, it seems, or or people are going to, like, be outraged and... You know, won't you canceled? So, he basically just had to joke about himself and his family mostly. Cause, I mean, he, I mean, look, he he didn't get the host of Oscars because he refused to apologize again for something he already apologized for. You know, it's which I kind of get where he was coming from there. It's like, look, I, I apologized, and in a minute, this would just be me apologizing again. So y'all can save face and let me host the Oscars. So I kind of get him not doing it again because it wouldn't have been, you know, like it would have been like the first time he apologized because he apologized. This would have just been saving face. So, but like I said, it's really funny. Kevin Hart's just a good storyteller. I mean, anything he can take anything and make it funny. So it's it's definitely funny. It's definitely worth a watch. But you can tell, like he's. You know, he's trying not to get canceled again, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, give it a watch. I mean, the dude's doing what he can. I mean, he's, it's funny all the way through. Jokes are hitting. Every joke's hitting, so, I mean, he's making the best of a bad situation. I mean, he's, he's making the jokes you can make now, so, I mean, you know, what can he do? But, yeah, give it a watch. Support the guy. He's awesome. So anyway, yeah, I mainly just wanted to show my my cool new art, man. I just I dig picture day from uh from Straka, man. Look at that. That's awesome. Look at those eyes, dude. Dude can draw. Anyway, just wanted to show off my art and then talk about some movies I've seen lately, mostly documentaries and such, but anyway, I'll uh be back tomorrow with something else. Anyway, uh remember to like, comment, and share. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks.